Hey, what's up? Welcome back to uh, this new video. This one is paper three of May and June 2004 of A Level Math. And uh, in this video, of course, we'll be trying to explain everything uh, as simple as possible, uh, step by step. Now, with that being said, let's move on to the questions that we have for you today. Now, let's move on to question number one. So, sketch the graph of y equal to sec x 4, 0, 2, 2 pi. Right. Um, now, one thing is. This question, I don't think is it's tough, but it is very uncommon, and because of that, we might make mistakes, right? So one way to look at this, well, so what is sec? You may ask yourself, what is sec? Sec is is equal to one over cos. Now we are very familiar with cos of x. So one way we can do this question is by by um, simply let's think of the graph of cos of x, and then we can draw sec of x because sec is only 1 over cos of x, the reciprocal of the cos value. Now, um, how do you draw a graph of cos? Well, we use the table of values, right? So here we have 0 and 2 pi. That will be 0 here for the x values. So let me write x values and the corresponding, corresponding y values. But again, this is just for um, y equal to cos x at first. And here we'll have y equal to sec x afterwards but again you know you guys don't need to do all this i'm doing this just to explain to you guys how we can uh, derive the the graph of sec x now i can begin with zero right and then uh, let me choose the intervals that we can use here so here we can use the interval of 90 so here we have uh, now of course we will be we are working with radians but we know the the conversion is 180 degrees to pi radians. It is not important, but it's good to know in either cases. So let me have pi over over 2 and pi and 3 pi over 2 and finally 2 pi for the extremes of this uh, domain. So for the first one, when cos is 0, here we have to use radians, right? Cos 0, it is 1, so it begins at 1. Now cos of pi over 2, that'll be 0, okay, cos of pi, minus 1, and uh, cos of 3 pi over 2 is 0, and cos of 2 pi is 1. Now, to find sec x, we know it is 1 divided by cos, so 1 divided by this. So let's divide. 1 divided by 1 is just 1. Now what is 1 divided by 0? You will have a mistake. But usually you may know in math term terms, 1 divided by 0, it will lead to infinity. Right? Cool. Now in this case, um, here we have what? 1 divided by uh, minus 1. It is minus 1. Again, infinity right here. And this will go to 1 as well. Okay, so in math term again, this is the point. If you divide by by zero, it will kind of lead to infinity. I hope you guys know this. When you divide by a very small number, your top value will go to infinity. Now, using these values, let's draw the graph. Now, what I can do is as well, I can first draw the graph of cos of x. Again, cos of x is not your answer. You can always erase that at the end, but you can use that knowledge to draw your actual graph of sec of x. Now, why am I doing all this? This is because just in case you guys don't know how to do it directly, you get you get panicked, you can always look at this in such a way. So one by one, this is my axis. Right here. Okay, I'll mark these as, here we go, this one, this one, this one, this one. So here we have 0, pi by 2, pi, 3 pi by 2, so 0, pi by 2, pi, 3 pi by 2, and 2 pi. Now whenever you see infinity, we have to have what? The asymptotes. Infinity means it just keeps going up or going down. We have to find out when we draw this. So here we have infinity, right? And here we also have infinity for this value over here. Now, of course, you'll be using a pencil. So my idea here for this question is we first will be, uh, let me first mark the points. 
I'll use 1 to be here and minus 1 to be here. So 1 and minus 1. This is my y-axis and this is the x-axis. Now again, I will first draw the graph of cos x, which is not your answer. I'm doing this for you guys to understand what's happening. My first point is 0, 1. It is right here. I'll have uh, 0, which is this one. Then I will have minus 1, which is right here, right? This will be right here. And 1 will be, will be right here. There you go. Now I will draw the cos line with a blue pen, so usually it will have this shape. Right, this is my cos graph. Now when it comes down to infinity, we understand it can be infinity up or infinity down. We don't know yet, let's find out. So here, how would you find this one? So first point, let me use a green pen for this one. Again, the green one will be your final answer, right? So the first point is this one. Now, I can see this is going in this direction. So it is the reciprocal, so it will go in the opposite direction. So you will go, go up. You will not touch this one because it will go to infinity. It will approach the asymptote, but it will not touch it. So this is the first point. I mean, the first part of the curve. And now for this one, this is cool. And here we have this, which is the value over here. Again, we have this part right here. It will go the other way, the inverse, right? The, the reciprocal. So this will go to this one. And this will go on this side as well. Approaching the asymptotes of that one. It will keep going up and up. You will not touch those values. Now for here, same, same way. It, this is of this shape, but it will have to be in this shape. So here we have this point, 1, 1, and then we just have to kind of reflect it upward. You will have something like that. Try your best uh, to make this a curve which is pleasant looking. So you have something like that. Approaches, but not touching the, the line. All right, cool. This is, um, you have to label your graph and make sure you erase that cost curve afterwards, right? Because we don't need the blue one, we just need the green one to show that this keeps going on, going on, going on, and on. So this will be my y equal to sec x curve. Okay? And that is your question number one. Now let's move on to question number two. So here we have to solve the inequality of modulus of 2x plus 1 less than modulus of x. Now we have modulus on both sides, but we also have x on both sides, we just have to square both sides. That's the easiest um, solution. Now square both sides, you will have what? Square and square over here. So expand, you will have 4x square plus 4x plus 1 less than x square. Send everything to one side, you will have um, 3x square plus 4x plus 1 less than 0. Now we can find the critical values. How? Taking the same equation, so which is this, 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 equal to zero. Now how can you solve this? By factorizing. So you can always use your formula if you want to. If you don't know how to factorize properly, no problem. We just need to find the values of x in that equation. So to have to have plus four, I have to have uh, plus three and plus one, right? Plus three plus one is plus four. Now x will be the value of minus one over three. X will be the value of minus one. Now, I'll have to use my number line to understand what's happening. This is my line of 0, just to uh, as reference. Uh, minus 1 will be on this side, and minus 1 over 3 will be on this side. Now, I do understand uh, this is my curve. This is positive. It will have a minimum shape, right? Something like this, right? And I'm looking for points less than 0, so it, this is above 0. Less will be below, so it will be between those two. Right, so hence, I do confirm my inequality will be x has to be between the values of minus 1 and minus 1 over 3. Okay, and that is your question number 2. I hope the first half of the video was somewhat helpful. If you guys would love to access the full video, feel free to click on the Patreon link on the main page. Otherwise, 
you can go to the description below and click on this link to access the Patreon page for the full video. With that being said, good luck and thank you for watching.